Hallelujah. Welcome, most beloved of the Lord, to day 51 of 150 days of Psalms. It's a joy. It's a blessing. Hallelujah. Why don't you go ahead and share this video? Why don't you go ahead and just click on that share button so that others can also access this wonderful wonderful scriptures hallelujah we give you the praise we give you the honor father there is none who can compare to you you're the great I am we honor you Lord we honor you Lord we honor you Lord there is none who can we compare to you? You are the great I am. You are the rock and the lifter of our heads, our Father. We magnify your name, Father. As we come into this wonderful time, Lord, declaring of your restoration, declaring of your goodness, declaring of your majesty, declaring that you reign. Oh, hallelujah. There is none like you, Lord. The heavens declare your glory, Lord. The heavens declare your glory, Lord. Hallelujah. You are wonderful, Lord Jesus. We magnify your name. We magnify your name. We say there is none who can compare to you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. There is none who can compare to you. You are the great I am. Beloved, it, it is not by our strength and power that we prevail. It's by the grace and the power of the Lord that he allows us into you know, a place where he is helping us. Thank you, Jesus. The word of the Lord says in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter number 11 verse 23 It says I received from the Lord what I also gave unto you the night the Lord Jesus Christ was betrayed he took bread and when he had given thanks he said this is my body which is for you do this in remembrance of me in the same way after the supper he took the cup and when he had given thanks, he said, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this every time you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat of this bread and drink of this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Beloved, we are in this wonderful, wonderful time about to share in communion as we always do as we start uh, the broadcast. So I want to encourage you to align yourself to a place of receiving from the Lord grace and capacity to remain in Him and with Him. For He is faithful and He is just. And His hand is upon us as we wait on Him in the name of Jesus. So let's pray for the elements. Father, we thank you for the bread, we thank you for the cup, we thank you for this opportunity for us to share in communion. And we pray, Father God, as we partake of this bread and partake of this cup, that we proclaim your death until you come. And that, Father, every power that comes, Lord God, upon us when we share in the communion, the, from the Holy Spirit, restoration, protection, divine guidance, all those things, Father, even opening the portals of heaven for us, we pray as we partake of this communion, the Father, we will identify with your death until you come. In Jesus' mighty and precious name, we pray with thanksgiving. Amen and amen and amen and amen. I want us to partake of the bread together.
this particular decal. Father, we honor you. into 51 we honor you we magnify you hallelujah we honor you our father hallelujah what a joy to always share this in uh, you know the nations of the earth this is a word saying thank you jesus Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We are saying thank you to the Lord from the nation of Ethiopia. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. 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 We thank you, Jesus, for this far we have come. Indeed, it's by your doing, it's by your grace, it's by your capacity that we have gathered, O oh Lord, again in your name, Father. And wondering, wonderful name, O oh Lord, of our Lord Jesus Christ is what we exalt. And that's the purpose of the journey of 150 days of Psalms. Psalm 51. For the director of music, a Psalm of David. When the prophet Nathan came to him after David had committed adultery with Bathsheba. Verse 1. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your unfailing love, according to your great compassion. Blot out my transgressions, wash away all my iniquity, and cleanse me from sin. For I know my transgressions and my sin is always before me. Against you, you only have I sinned and done what is right, what is evil in your sight, so that you are proved right when you speak and justified when you judge. Verse number five. Surely it was sinful, I was sinful at birth, sinful from the time when my mother conceived me. Surely you desire truth in the inward parts. You teach me wisdom in the innermost place. Psalm 51 verse 7. Cleanse me with isop and I will be clean. Wash me and I will be whiter than snow. Let me hear joy and gladness. Let the bones you have crushed rejoice. Hide your face from my sins and blot out my iniquity. Verse 10. Create in me a pure heart, O God. And renew a right steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me from your presence or take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore, restore to me the joy of your salvation and grant me a willing spirit to sustain me. Verse number 13. Then I will teach transgressors your ways. And sinners will turn back to you. Save me from blood guilt, O God, 
the God who saves me, and my tongue will sing of your righteousness. Verse 15, O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. Verse 16, you do not delight in sacrifice, or I would bring it. You do not take pleasure in burnt offerings. Verse number 17 of Psalm 51. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart. O Lord, you will not despise. Verse 18. In your good pleasure, in your good pleasure, make Zion prosper. Build up the walls of Jerusalem, verse 19. Then there will be righteous sacrifices. Whole burnt offerings to delight you. Then bulls will be offered on your altar. Beloved, Psalm 51 is a powerful place that many of us need to find. A place of restoration. A place of asking God, create in me a pure heart. A pure heart. Heart is determined by our belief. The heart that we talk about is not just a physical red organ pumping blood inside your body. The heart, we mean the, the center of your belief. The center, the core person of your belief. The core of your belief system is what we call the heart. And it's only God who can be able to give you a heart of flesh instead of a heart of stone. And this, this beloved, is a place of asking God to restore. It's a place of asking God, don't cast me from your presence or take your Holy Spirit from me. Beloved, we move on to the book of Psalm, uh, Proverbs. Proverbs. Proverbs chapter number 10. We give glory to God for helping us in the name of Jesus Christ. We thank God that this, this is the truth. The word of God never goes out in vain. Whenever it goes out, it goes to perform a work that he has been that he has sent it to perform. So when you see the word of God come forth, then know that it is going to perform a work. And that work that he performs, it does not return in void, in vain. There are two sides of fulfilling the word of God. You could be either fulfilling the word of God positively or you could be fulfilling the word of God negatively. If you choose to go in the direction of wickedness, then where the scripture says the wicked will not prosper, that is you. If you choose to follow and obey the statutes of God, when he says that surely the Lord will bring you blessings, then that is your portion as well. Proverbs chapter 10. Proverbs of Solomon. The Proverbs of Solomon, a wise son brings joy to his father, but a foolish son grief to his mother. Verse 2. Ill-gotten treasures are of no value, but righteousness delivers from death. Verse 3. The Lord does not let the righteous go hungry, but he thwarts the craving of the wicked. Verse 4. Lazy hands make a man poor, but diligent hands bring wealth. Beloved, I come to mention this, that when you are just on your computer or on your phone, and you are not building yourself up by reading scriptures or listening to good messages and applying the, the knowledge and you know creating notes out of that, doing work, literally, your hands will make you poor. Lazy hands make a man poor, but diligent hands bring wealth. Diligent hands bring wealth. This is something that you need to know. Diligent hands bring wealth. Diligent hands bring wealth. <laughs> diligent hands will bring, will bring wealth. And I pray for you. According to Proverbs 12 verse 24, it also says the same things. Let me read that one for us because it's good for us to also cross-reference and to look at these scriptures, you know, with joy and gladness, even as we do this because God is helping us all. It says this, diligent hands will rule, but laziness ends in forced labor. 
Verse 5. He who gathers crops in summer is a wise son, but he who sleeps during harvest is a disgraceful son. Verse number 6. Blessings crown the head of the righteous, but violence overwhelms the mouth of the wicked. Verse 7. The memory of the righteous will be a blessing, but the name of the wicked will rot. Verse number 8. The wise in heart accepts commands, but a chattering fool comes to ruin. Verse 9. The man of integrity walks securely, but he who takes crooked paths will be found out. Verse 10. He who winks maliciously causes grief, and a chattering fool comes to ruin. Verse 11. The mouth of the righteous is a fountain of life, but violence overwhelms the mouth of the wicked. Verse number 12. Hatred stirs up dissension, but love covers all wrongs. Wisdom is found on the lips of the discerning, but a rod for the back of him who lacks, wisdom, who lacks judgment. <laughs> These are words of Jesus, the words of truth. These are words inspired of Solomon by the Holy Spirit, which make it a proverb to help you to get wisdom, to get knowledge, and also to be empowered to make your father happy. Because a wise son, a wise son brings joy to the father. I pray that that is not just for the physical father and son, but also for you who is a child of God. When you are wise, you bring joy to the father. You bring happiness. You bring joy. It says in verse 14, Wise men store up knowledge, but the mouth of a fool invites ruin. Verse 15, The wealth of the rich is their fortified city, but poverty is the ruin of the poor. Verse 16, The wages of the righteous bring them life, but income of the wicked brings them punishment. Verse 17. He who heeds discipline shows the way to life, but whoever ignores correction leads others astray. Proverbs 10 verse 18. He who conceals his hatred has lying lips, and whoever spreads slander is a fool. Verse 19. When words are many, sin is not absent. But he who holds his tongue is wise. Proverbs 10, 19. That one, I want you to put it in the tablets of your heart. Don't leave that one. 10, 19. Don't leave it. Because when words are many, sin is not absent. You must make sure that sin is destroyed out of your life by choosing, by the grace of God, by choosing not to have so many words. In fact, we read in 2 Timothy chapter number uh, 2, it talks about that avoid godless chatter. Because many have gone that way and they have found themselves in the place of ruin. Listen to verse 20. The tongue of the righteous is choice silver, but the heart of the wicked is of little value. I was looking at some of the properties of silver. And you know that choice silver is a good conductor of heat. In fact, silver will connect electricity very fast because it is a good, very good conductor. Silver is the next precious metal after we look at gold. If you see the athletics, people run and they get gold and silver and bronze. The choice of the righteous is choice silver. It's a precious thing. But the heart of the wicked is of little value. Verse number 21. The lips of the righteous nourish many, but fools die for lack of wisdom. Beloved, every time you hear yourself speaking, are your lips encouraging? Are your lips nourishing? Are your lips confessing who Jesus says you are? Or are you confessing the negative stuff and making people feel tired and depressed and all these things? You know, 
I thank God because I come from a country that is called Kenya, whose national anthem in English and in Swahili starts with a prayer to God. But the challenges in our nation is that people choose that their lips will open and speak the negative words about people, about the nation, about the land. But I choose to cry out, and I encourage you to choose to cry out, O oh God, E Mungu, just like our national anthem. The blessing of the Lord, verse 22, brings wealth, and he adds no trouble to it. Verse 23, a fool finds pleasure in evil conduct, but a man of understanding delights in wisdom. Mm, I see you now. Delight in wisdom, my dear brother. Delight in wisdom, my dear sister. Hallelujah. Verse 24, what the wicked dreads will overtake him. What the righteous desire will be granted. Verse 25, when the storm has swept by, the wicked are gone, but the righteous stand firm forever. Verse 26. <laughs> Vinegar to the teeth, smoke to the eyes. So is a sluggard to those who send him. Let me read this to you in Swahili. It's important for you to get it as it is in the name of Jesus. Proverbs chapter number 10. Methali kumi msari wa ishirini natano. Uh, shirin na sita iko. Eh, shirin na sita. Inasema hivi. Kama siki menoni. Na kama moshi machoni. Ndivyo alivyo mtu mvivu kwao wa mtu mao. Is that, that the, the vinegar to the teeth. Vinegar is called siki menoni. Kama siki menoni. Na kama moshi machoni. Ndivyo alivyo mtu mvivu kwa wa mtu mao. Beloved, this is not just for physical laziness. It's even for spiritual laziness. I've mentioned to you. Again, something I need to say in Swahili is in uh, the Proverbs 10.19. It says, Katika wingi wa maneno, hapakosi kuwa na maovu. Bali yeye azuyae mdomo, midomo yake. Ufanya akili Kiswahili inasema midomo haisemi mdomo inasema midomo kuna midomo ya aina mbili ya rohoni na ya mdomo <laughs> your heart utterance also is a mouth you need to know that let's go on in the name of our lord jesus christ it says in verse 27 the fear of the lord adds length to life but the years of the wicked are cut short verse 29 the way of the Lord is a refuge for the righteous. The way of the Lord is a refuge for the righteous. But it is the ruin of those who do evil. Proverbs 10.30 The righteous will never be uprooted, but the wicked will not remain in the land. I mention to you that you can choose to fulfill being righteous and not being uprooted, or you choose being wicked and not remain on the land, in the land. This is the scripture. Let me tell you the word of God is everlasting. It is fulfilled to the minute, to the second, to the dot. Everything. Right now you are fulfilling a word of God. Yourself. If at all you are in poverty, you are in sickness, you are in disease, there is a word that you are fulfilling. If at all you are in provision, you are in... Yani, the, neno la mungu ndio linaendesha dunia yote. There is something in your life that you are fulfilling in God's word. If at all there are things that are flowing in your generation online and you have not taken time to stand and say, I belong to Jesus. You are still belonging to your tribe. You are still belonging to your clan. You are still belonging to your father, your mother. You need to know that when you come to the Lord, you must be in a new family. A family of the Lord Jesus Christ. I'll teach this again in another broadcast. Proverbs 10, 31. It says, The mouth of the righteous brings forth wisdom, but a perverse tongue will be cut out. It says, The lips of the righteous know what is fitting, but the mouth of the wicked only what is perverse. You see that? 
The lips of the righteous know what is fitting, but the mouth of the wicked only what is perverse. So you need to see what am I about to say. Before you say, just look at yourself seeing what you want to say. Are you going to say the things you want to say? I come to tell you, beloved, restoration comes from the place called rest. You must be in rest to get restoration. Any kind of restoration needs rest. Even your computer, when you're trying to restore it to an earlier date, you will need to stop working on it so that it goes back to the earlier restored time. The same thing with your phone. If at all you want to restore its settings, it has to go into a place of rest. It has to go into a safe mode. <laughs> we go to Ecclesiastes. Ecclesiastes. It's a joy to always proclaim the word of God. I pray that I'll do this all my life. To the glory of God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Ecclesiastes chapter. We are in Ecclesiastes 10. I believe it is. He says, as dead flies give perfume a bad spell, so a little folly outweighs wisdom and honor. The heart of the wise inclines to the right, but the heart of the fool inclines to the left. Even as he walks along the road, the fool lacks sense and shows everyone how stupid he is. If a ruler's anger rises against you, do not leave your post. Calmness can lay great errors to rest. Ecclesiastes 10 verse 3, it says, verse 5. There is an evil I have seen under the sun, the sort of error that rises from a ruler. Fools are put in many high positions, while the rich occupy the low ones. I have seen slaves on horseback, while princes go on foot like slaves. Verse 8. Whoever digs a pit may fall into it. Whoever breaks through a wall may be eaten by a snake. Verse 9. Whoever queries stones may be injured by them. Whoever splits logs may be endangered by them. Verse 10. If the axe is dull and its edge unsharpened, more strength is needed. But skill will bring success. Verse 11. If a snake bites before it is charmed, there is no profit for the charmer. Words from a wise man's mouth are gracious, but a fool is consumed by his own lips. Verse 13. At the beginning, his words are folly. At the end, they are wicked madness. And verse 14. And the fool multiplies words. No one knows what is coming. Who can tell him what will happen to him? Verse 15. A fool's work wearies him. He does not know the way to town. Verse 16. Woe to you, O land, whose king was a servant and whose princess feast in the morning. Blessed are you, O land, whose king is of noble birth and whose princess eat at a proper time, for strength and not for drunkenness. Verse 18. If a man is lazy, the rafters sag. If his hands are idle, the house leaks. A feast is made for laughter, and wine makes life merry. But money is the answer for everything. Verse 20. Do not revile the king even in your thoughts, or curse the rich in your bedroom. Because a bird of the air may carry your words, and a bird on the wing may report what you say. Beloved of the Lord, we are again cautioned against our words, our words, our words. The, the restoration must happen from the words. The things we are saying, the things we are believing, the things we are speaking. That's right there. That's the restoration. It comes from rest. Rest. Restoration. Receive restoration in the name of Jesus. We move on to the book of Leviticus. Leviticus. Leviticus chapter 10. Aaron's son, Nadab and Abihu. Hmm. 
Now this is a very very interesting story because these people that you're about to see were rightfully consecrated to serve God. But I want you to understand something about God. God is not emotional. He's spirit. He's right where you are right now. As I speak to you, he's there. As I speak to you, he's ministering to you. The grace of God is upon you. He's right there, right now as we speak. I pray that your spirit will realize him. Your spirit will be sensitive to him. Because he's speaking to you. He's speaking right now. He's talking to you about certain things in your life that you know you have not done the way you are supposed to do them, but you are still doing them the same way anyway. Now I come to mention a caution, because the story you are about to read is a story that will show you of how God works. And there are some things, if we allow in our lives, He is a consuming fire. He will consume you. God is merciful, but His word is also a consuming fire. May you be restored back to the place of knowing him and acknowledging him. Leviticus 10 verse 1. Aaron's sons, Nadab and Abihu, took their censers, put them in the fire. This is Leviticus chapter 10. Put them in the fire, in a, put fire in them and added incense. And they offered an authorized fire before the Lord. Contrary to his command. Hmm. We must find this command. The command was written in Exodus chapter 30 verse 9. And the command was says like this. The command says like this. Do not offer on this altar any other incense or any burnt offering or grain offering and don't pour a drink offering on it that is the command but Aaron's sons Nadab and Abihu took their censers put fire in them and added incense and they offered an authorized fire before the Lord contrary to his command so fire came out of the presence of the Lord and consumed them and they died before the Lord hmm. Hmm. just a simple act of disobedience and it cost them instant death fire came out of the presence of the Lord and consumed them and they died before the Lord. Moses then said to Aaron, this is what the Lord spoke when he said, among those who approach me, I will show myself holy. In the sight of all the people, I will be honored. Beloved, in Exodus 14 verse 4, the Lord says and said, I will harden Pharaoh's heart and he will pursue them, but I will gain glory from myself through Pharaoh and his army, and the Egyptians will know that I am the Lord. So the Israelites did this. In the book of Isaiah 44 verse 23, hallelujah, thank you Lord for teaching us. Thank you Holy Spirit. Isaiah 44 verse, uh, verse um, Isaiah 44 Verse 23, Isaiah is uh, one of the prophetic books, big, big book. Actually, its chapters are 66, just like the books of the Bible. Isaiah 44, verse 23. It says, I will read, it says, Sing for joy, you heavens, for the Lord has done it. Shout aloud, you earth, burst into song. You mountains, and you forests and all your trees, for the Lord has redeemed Jacob. 
He displays His glory in Israel. I pray for you today. May the Lord redeem you and display His glory upon your life in the name of Jesus. Amen. We move on. Leviticus chapter 10 verse number 3. Aaron remained silent. After the death of his two sons, because of offering unholy and unauthorized fire, Aaron remained silent. Moses summoned Mishael and Elzaphan, Elders, Elders, sons of Aaron's uncle, Uziel, and said to them, Come here, carry your cousins outside the camp, away from the front of the sanctuary. So they came and carried them still in their tunics outside the camp, as Moses had ordered. Then Moses said to Aaron and his sons Eliezer and Athima, Do not let your hair become unkempt. You see this? Unkempt hair is called dreadlocks. Even that other funny style I see people doing. This is in the scripture. I said, we will not touch anything unless we encounter it in the Bible. When we come, in, we come, we get it, we find it, we explain it. So, just keep on the journey, you see. Keep on the journey. You're going to see, you're going to find out different things. What God feels about clothes is in the scripture. What God feels about appearance is in the scripture. You're going to see it all over there. Very soon you'll be talking about tattoos. They'll be here in Leviticus 19. You'll see what they mean and so on. Now let me just explain more as we go on. He says, And Moses said to Aaron and his sons, Eliezer and Ithamar, Don't let your hair become unkempt, and do not tear your clothes. Now, some of these practices that were keeping the hair unkempt, tearing the clothes, these were practices of mourning that they used to do nowadays you see a fashion of clothes that are literally torn you know they buy clothes they tear the clothes you think it's the fashion but it's in the spirit it has a meaning in the spirit there's something that it is showing is reflecting there's a, a, a american fashion person who does some weird looking clothes and then when you look at them you say ah so for me, I thank God that I don't put so much regard in fashion and clothes and all those things. But when the scripture is allowing us to see, you will begin to know that you could be meaning something else when you mean something else at the same time. So Eliezer and Ithama have been told, don't even think of mourning your brothers or you will die before the Lord and the Lord will be angry with the whole community because but your relatives all all the house of Israel may mourn for those the Lord has destroyed by fire you see this this thing that Moses said to Aaron and his sons Eliezer and Ithamar don't let your hair become unkempt and do not tear your clothes the moment you are seeing that so you are dressed in in clothes that are torn eh? who are you mourning who are you mourning? You have the unkempt hair. Who are you mourning? Who are you? Who has died in your life? Who are you mourning? This is a practice of mourning. It's a practice associated with death. Or you will die. Listen to this command. Oh my goodness. Powerful command. Moses said to Aaron and his sons, Eliezer and Ithamar. I repeat again so that you can look at it on your own. Leviticus 10 verse 6. He said to Eliezer and Ithamar, don't let your hair become unkempt and don't tear your clothes or you will die and the Lord will, become, will be angry with the whole community. But your relatives, all the house of Israel, may mourn for those the Lord has destroyed by fire. Then listen to verse 7. Do not leave the entrance of the tent of meeting or you will die because the Lord's anointing oil is on you. So they did as Moses said. The anointing kills, beloved of the Lord. The anointing is not something that you just want to play around with it. You say, I'm anointed. <laughs> I touch people, they fall down. I'm anointed. That is not what anointing is. 
Anointing, you can see from the book of Leviticus, is, is something that God himself said, don't move from my presence or you will die. Now, it, the literal thing that we are talking about now is that you will lose my power. You will never have my power. Verse 8. Then the Lord said to Aaron, You and your sons are not to drink wine or any fermented drink whenever you go into the tent of meeting or you will die. This is a lasting ordinance for the generations to come. I remember in Bible school, we had that argument in class, whether we should serve the Holy Communion with wine or without wine. Well, for me, I choose to be silent about it, but there's a lasting ordinance in the Word of God that no drinking of wine, no fermented drink. If you are considered a priest, because we are now the priesthood of believers, all of us are into the priesthood of believers. We have been called out as kings and priests by the Lord. So God has called us out. And he said, you and your sons are not to drink wine or any other fermented drink whenever you go into the tent of meeting or you will die. This is a lasting ordinance for the generations to come. Verse 10. You may distinguish between the holy. You must distinguish between the holy and the common. Between the unclean and the clean. Where? This one is a whole sermon, beloved of the Lord. You must distinguish. There are certain things that you are not going to do when you give and you consider them holy to the Lord. You must distinguish. Lazma kuwe na tafauti. I would like to hear that in Swahili. How does it sound? Leviticus, Leviticus, Leviticus inaitwa mambo ya walawi ka Kiswahili. Inasema katika mstari wa kumi, sura uh, katika sura ya kumi, mstari wa kumi. inasema hivi kisha mpate kupam, kupambanua kupambanua mpate kupambanua kati ya liyo matakatifu na hayo ya liyo ya siku zote na kati ya liyo na jisi na hayo ya liyo safi tena mpate kuwafundisha wana wa Israeli amri hizi zote ambazo Bwana amewaambia kwa mkono wa Musa that you must distinguish between the holy and the common the clean the unclean and the clean and you must teach the israelites all the decrees the lord has given them through moses moses said to aaron and his remaining sons eliezer and ithama take the grain offering left over from the offerings made to the lord by fire and eat it prepared without yeast beside the altar for it is most holy. Eat it in a holy place, because it is your share and your sons. Share the offerings made to the Lord by fire, for so I have commanded. But you and your sons and daughters may eat the breast that was waved and the thigh that was presented. Eat them in a ceremonially clean place. They have been given to you and your children as your share of the Israelites' fellowship offerings. The thigh that was presented and the breast that was waved be, uh, be brought with the fat portions of the offerings made by the fire to be waved before the Lord as a wave offering. This will be the regular share for you and your children as the Lord has commanded. When Moses inquired about the goat of the sin offering and found that it had been burned up, he was angry with Eliezer and Ithamar Aaron's remaining sons and asked, Why didn't you eat the sin offering in the sanctuary area? It is most holy. It was given to you to take away the guilt of the community by making atonement to them for them before the Lord. Since its blood was not taken into the holy place, you should have eaten the goat in the sanctuary area as I commanded. Aaron replied to Moses, Today, they sacrifice their sin offering and their burnt offering before the Lord. But such things have this, as this have happened to me. Would the Lord have been pleased if I had eaten the sin offering today? Then Moses had, when Moses had this, he was satisfied. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We move on now to the book of 2 Timothy. 2 Timothy. 
you know one thing let me tell you beloved um one incredible thing that you need to know is that the word of god when you read it publicly and you release it into the atmosphere it becomes faith you may read a portion of scripture like that and just read it like that aloud and once you do that your faith comes by hearing the holy spirit will lead you into another portion of scripture that will help you understand what Moses was doing when he was talking to Eliezer and Abihu. He will give you knowledge and understanding and you'll be able to know and acknowledge what's going on. The Holy Spirit is just a wonderful teacher and we acknowledge his presence. Thank you, precious Holy Spirit. You are amazing. You are lovely. You are holy. We honor you for your presence in this meeting. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We move on to 2 Timothy. Wow, what a joy, beloved. 2 Timothy chapter 3. Hmm. Hey! This one is now the one. 2 Timothy chapter 3. Listen this. It says, but mark this. There will be terrible times in the last days. People will be lovers of themselves. Lovers of money. Boastful. Proud, abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, unholy. I am just looking at it and I see myself in two or three or four of those things there. I am saying to the Lord, have mercy on me, restore me, Lord. Let me tell you, beloved, the place to bring this scripture is to yourself. It's not to say, look at them, them they are unholy. No, yourself. For the true restoration to happen to a believer, they must apply the scripture upon their, themselves, upon looking at their sorry state of their soul. Unholy, ungrateful, disobedient to their parents, abusive, proud, boastful, lovers of money, lovers of themselves. Verse 3, without love, unforgiving, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, not lovers of the good, treacherous, rash, conceited, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying its power, have nothing to do with them. They are the kind whom warm their way into homes and gain control over the weak-willed women who are loaded down with sins and are swayed by all kinds of evil desires. Always learning, but never being able to acknowledge the truth. My friend, I pray that as we continue the journey of 150 days of Psalms, may we not come to the place of always learning and never able to acknowledge the truth. I pray that you will be able to learn and acknowledge the truth. Verse 8. Just as Janus and Jambres opposed Moses, so also these men oppose the truth. Now that story about Janus and Jambres is in Exodus chapter 7, verse 11. There are some witches, some, um, what are, what's their name? The, witch, the sorcerers who are with, with the Pharaoh. In the Exodus chapter 7, verse 11, it says, Pharaoh then summoned wise men and sorcerers, and the Egyptian magicians also did the same things by their sacred arts. So those spirit, those guys, they were called Janus and Jambres. Those were the magicians that were opposing Moses. So these men oppose the truth, men of depraved minds, who are far, who as far as the faith is concerned are rejected. But they will not get very far. Because, as in the case of those men, their folly will be clear to everyone. Verse 10. You, however, know all about my teaching, my way of life, my purpose, my faith, my patience, my love, my endurance, persecutions, sufferings. What kind of things happened to me in Antioch, in Conium, and Lystra? The persecutions I endured... Yet the Lord rescued me from all of them. In fact, 
I'm reading 2 Timothy chapter 3 verse 12. In fact, everyone who wants to live a godly life in Christ Jesus will be persecuted. While evil men and imposters will go from bad to worse, deceiving and being deceived. Verse 14. But as for you, continue in what you have learned and have become convinced of, because you know those from whom you learned it, and how from infancy you have known the Holy Scriptures, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. Let me mention, beloved, that the purpose of the Holy Scriptures is to make you wise, number one, for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. Salvation is only through faith alone. It's not through what you can do or where you can go. Listen to verse 16 and put it in your heart. All scripture is God-breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness so that the man of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, for the Holy Scriptures. We move on to the book of Ephesians, chapter number 3. We thank God that in the pattern of what we are doing, we have the book of Ephesians, the book of Revelation, the book of Psalms, the book of Proverbs, the book of uh, Ecclesiastes. Those five books, they are with us till the end of 150 days. So in 150 days, the book of Ephesians, the Lord will help us to go through it over and over again. You can do the maths and the calculations to know how many times. Ephesians, even the book of Revelation, the book of Proverbs, and the book of Ecclesiastes. The book of Proverbs, I can give you the math. We go over the book of Proverbs five times in every season of 150 days of Psalms. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 1. It says, for this reason, Paul the prisoner of Christ Jesus, for the sake of you Gentiles. Surely you have heard the administration of God's grace given to me for you, that is, the mystery made known to me by revelation, as I have already written briefly. In reading this then, you will be able to understand my insight into the mystery of Christ, which was made known to men, in the other generations, as it has now been revealed by the Spirit to God's holy apostles and prophets. Verse 6. This mystery is that through the gospel, the Gentiles are heirs together with Israel, members of together of one body, and sharers together with the promise in Christ Jesus. Verse 7. I became a servant of this gospel. By the gift of God's grace, given through the working of his power. Although I am less than the least of all God's people, this grace was given me to preach to the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ. And to make plain to everyone the administration of this mystery, which for ages past, was kept hidden in God who created all things. Verse number 10. His intent was that now, through the church, the manifold wisdom of God should be made known to the rulers, the authorities in the heavenly realms, according to his eternal purpose, which he accomplished in Christ Jesus our Lord. In him, and through faith in him, we may approach God with freedom and confidence. Verse 13. I ask you therefore not to be discouraged because of my sufferings for you, which are for your glory. Verse 13. That's 14. For this reason, I kneel before the Father, from whom his whole family in heaven and on earth derives his name. I pray that out of his glorious riches, he may strengthen you with power, through his spirit in your inner being. Verse 16. I pray that out of his glorious riches, he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being, 
so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have power together with all the saints to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ. And to know his love, this love that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. Now listen to 20. And now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than we ask or imagine, according to his power that is at work within us, to him be the glory, and in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations, forever and ever. Amen. Beloved, what a joy to be in the book of Ephesians constantly and to have it published and printed in our hearts so that we may have Christ dwelling in us richly. Hallelujah. We move to the book of Revelation. Revelation, 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 Revelation chapter 10. Then I saw another angel. I saw another mighty angel. Thank you, Jesus. We are in Revelation 10. Then I saw another mighty angel coming down from heaven. He was robed in a cloud and with a rainbow above his head. His face was like the sun and his legs like fairy pillars. He was holding a little scroll which lay open in his hand. He planted his right foot on the sea and his left foot on the land. And he gave a loud shout like the roar of a lion. When he shouted, the voices of the seven thunders spoke. When the seven thunders spoke, I was about to write. But I heard a voice from heaven say, Seal up what the seven thunders have said and do not write it down. Then the angel I had seen standing on the sea and on the land raised his right hand to heaven. And he swore by him who lives forever and ever, who created the heavens and all that is in them, the earth and all that is in it, and the sea and all that is in it. And he said, There will be no more delay. But in the days when the seventh angel is about to sound his trumpet, the mystery of God will be accomplished just as he announced to his servants the prophets. Then the voice that I heard from heaven spoke to me once more. Go take the scroll that lies open in the hand of the angel who is standing on the sea 
and on the land. So I went to the angel and asked him to give me the little scroll. He said to me, take it and eat it. It will turn sour. It will turn your stomach sour. But in your mouth, it will be as sweet as honey. So I took the little scroll from the angel's hand and ate it. It tasted as honey in my mouth. But when I had eaten it, my stomach turned sour. Then I was told, you must prophesy again about many peoples, languages, and kings. Oh Lord, there is none like you. You are worthy, Lord. We give you the praise, we give you the honor, we give you the adoration. Thank you for this time of proclaiming your word. Ah, Father, I prophesy to everyone watching this, the Lord you release your prophetic power of restoration upon their life. <laughs> In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. My Father, you are wonderful. I honor you. Thank you, Lord, for restoration that is coming from the place of rest. Thank you for restoring them that were walking out in sin. Father, let your hand be upon us in Jesus' name. You are here. You don't know the Lord. The word of God says, if you confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. So I want you to pray this prayer with me. Say, Lord Jesus, I confess with my mouth that you are Lord. I believe in my heart God raised you from the dead. Write my name in the Lamb's Book of Life. I am born again. The old is gone. The new has come. Fill me with your Holy Spirit and with your fire. In Jesus' name, Amen. Beloved, if you pray that prayer, you are born again. May the Lord bless you. Do write to us on the WhatsApp number plus two five four seven two two zero seven. 087087. You can also write on the inbox of the page 150 Days of Psalms, or you can get in touch um, via Malcolm David on Facebook. That's my handle. Thank you so much for watching, and God bless you. See you in the next video. Shalom. Shortly, I will post the link for the one hour of prayer. Shalom. <laughs>